everyone, I'm Sarah of Rich Textures Crochet and welcome. Today we're going to learn how to crochet the Daisy Market Bag, which you can see here in front of you. This is the first week in the 2023 Marvelous Market Bag Crochet Along, so welcome if you are joining me for that. If you haven't heard about this crochet along, check out the link down in the description of this video and you'll find a direct link for all the information there. So this is our Daisy Market Bag Crochet Along. This market bag measures approximately 14 by 18 inches when it is laid flat. It's worked all as one piece from the bottom up through to its continuous handles. For the design today, I'm going to be using some of the Lion Brand 24-7 cotton yarn. I'm going to be using three colors for the pattern itself. Each ball has about 186 yards in it and you're going to need two balls of your color A of which I've used this blue sky color, two balls of your color white, and only about 40 to 50, a lot less, probably 30 to 40 yards of your third color C which I'm using this lemon yellow color. You're also going to need a four millimeter crochet hook or a G6 hook and links to these items can be found in the description of this video. Also in the description you'll find a direct link to the free written pattern which is on my website at richtexturescrochet.com. So thank you so much for joining me while you're here. I invite you to subscribe, take a look around and uh, be sure to check out some of the other crochet market bag patterns here on my channel. This is my third year hosting this crochet along and follow along because there will be more market bags coming your way. Our market bag today is worked from the bottom up so we're going to start by making a slip knot. The bag is worked in rounds. We're going to start by chaining four. For round one, you're going to begin by working 11 double crochet stitches into the fourth chain from your hook. Your chain three will count as a double crochet stitch. If you would like, alternatively, you may make a magic ring and then work 12 double crochets into that magic ring. It's really up to you. Once you have your 11 double crochet stitches worked into the cent into the fourth chain from your hook, you're going to join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch, which is your starting chain three. Uh, when you're finished your bag, if you find this hole down in the bottom is too big for your liking, you can go ahead and sew it closed. I'm just going to leave mine as is. Next for round two, you're going to chain three. This chain three counts as a double crochet stitch. Do not turn your work. You're then going to work a double crochet into the same stitch as joining, so also into the top of your chain three. And then work two double crochet stitches into each stitch all the way around. At the end of this round, you're going to join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch and you will have a total of 24 stitches. At the end of round two, you're joining with a slip stitch into the top of your starting chain three, which is your first stitch. For round three, you're going to chain three. This counts as a double crochet stitch. Into your next stitch, work two double crochet stitches. You're now going to work one double crochet into your next stitch, followed by two double crochets into your next. 
Repeat that all the way around. One double crochet into your next stitch and two double crochets into your next. Repeat that all the way around. Join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch. At the end of round three, you'll have a total of 36 double crochet stitches. At the end of round three, join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch. For round four, chain three. And work a double crochet into your next stitch. You're then going to work two double crochets into your next. Next, work one double crochet into each of the next two stitches, followed by two double crochets into your next stitch. You're going to repeat that all the way around, one double crochet into each of the next two stitches, followed by two double crochets into your next stitch. All the way around, join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch. At the end of this round, you'll have a total of 48 stitches. At the end of your round four, you're joining with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch and chain three. For round five, you're going to work a double crochet in each of the next two stitches. Next, work two double crochets into the next stitch. Work one double crochet into each of the next three stitches. and two double crochets into your next. You're going to repeat that all the way around. Work one double crochet into each of the next three stitches. Followed by two double crochets into your next stitch. all the way around and you will join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch. At the end of this round you'll have a total of 60 double crochet stitches. At the end of round five join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch. For round six chain three. Work one double crochet into each of the next three stitches, followed by two double crochets into your next. Work one double crochet into each of the next four stitches. and two double crochets into your next stitch. You're going to repeat that all the way around, one double crochet into each of the next four stitches, followed by two double crochets into the next, and you'll have a total of 72 stitches at the end of this round when you join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch. At the end of round six, join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch. For round seven, chain three. Work a double crochet into each of the next four stitches. Next, work two double crochets into your next stitch. You're then going to work one double crochet into each of the next five stitches.
followed by two double crochets into your next stitch. You're going to repeat that all the way around one double crochet into each of the next five stitches, followed by two double crochets into your next stitch all the way around. Join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch. At the end of this round seven, you will have a total of 84 stitches. At the end of round seven, join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch. For round eight, chain three and work one double crochet into each of the next five stitches. Work two double crochets into your next stitch. You're now going to work one double crochet into each of the next six stitches. And two double crochet stitches into your next stitch. Repeat this all the way around, one double crochet in each of the next six stitches, followed by two double crochets into the next stitch. All the way around, join with the slip stitch into the top of your first stitch. And at the end of this round eight, you'll have a total of 96 stitches. For round nine, you're going to chain three Work one double crochet into each of the next six stitches. Followed by two double crochets into your next stitch. We're then going to work one double crochet into each of the next seven stitches. Followed by two double crochets into your next stitch. You're going to repeat that all the way around, one double crochet into each of the next seven stitches, followed by two double crochets into the next stitch, all the way around, join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch. At the end of this round, you'll have a total of 108 stitches. For round 10, you're going to chain three, Work one double crochet in each of the next seven stitches. Followed by two double crochets into your next stitch. Work one double crochet into each of the next eight stitches. followed by two double crochets into your next stitch. You're going to repeat that all the way around, one double crochet into each of the next eight stitches, followed by two double crochets into your next stitch. All the way around, join with the slip stitch into the top of your first stitch. At the end of round 10, you will have a total of 
120 stitches. For round 11, you're going to chain 3 and work a double crochet in each of the next 8 stitches. followed by two double crochets into your next stitch. Next, work one double crochet into each of the next nine stitches. followed by two double crochets into your next stitch. You're going to repeat that all the way around, one double crochet into each of the next nine stitches, followed by two double crochets into your next stitch, all the way around until you come to that starting chain three, slip stitch into the top of that first starting chain three, and uh, that brings you to the end of your round 11. At the end of round 11, you'll have a total of 132 stitches. For round 12, you're going to work a chain 3 and work one double crochet into each of the next 9 stitches. Work one, two double crochets into your next stitch. You're then going to work one double crochet into each of the next 10 stitches. followed by two double crochets into your next stitch. You're going to repeat that all the way around, one double crochet into each of the next 10 stitches, followed by two double crochets into your next stitch, all the way around, join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch, which is that starting chain three. At the end of this round 12, you will have a total of 144 stitches. At the end of round 12, you're going to join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch, and that brings you to the end of the de uh, increase rounds for the bottom of your bag. So this is what your bag should look like. Fold it over, you have a nice little semicircle here. Now for the next three rounds of your bag bottom, rounds 13, 14, and 15, you're simply going to chain one, single crochet into that same stitch as joining, and then single crochet into each stitch all the way around. So we're simply working single crochets in each stitch all the way around. When you come to your first stitch, join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch and continue on with the next round. So you want to work three rounds, rounds 15, 13, 14, and 15, of single crochet stitches. At the end of round 15, you're going to join with a slip stitch into the top of the first stitch, fasten off, and then you're going to join color B. And I will show you how to do that when I come around to the end of round 15.
At the end of round 15, for your bag bottom, you've worked three rounds of single crochet stitches. You're going to join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch, and then I just fastened off. You're then going to take your color B, and you're going to join that color into the same stitches joining into this first stitch with a slip stitch. Next, for round one of your bag bottom, you're with your color B, you're going to chain one and then work a half double crochet into that first stitch and half double crochet into each stitch all the way around. When you come to your first stitch, you're going to join with a slip stitch in the top of that first stitch and uh, you will continue to have 144 stitches. At the end of round one of your bag bottom, you're going to join with a slip stitch into the top of that first stitch. Do not turn your work. For round two, you're going to chain one. Now working in the third loop only all the way around, you're going to work a half double crochet in each stitch. To find your third loop, you're going to look at the back of your half double crochet and just below your back loop up at the top, you will see another loop that runs along just under it. This is your third loop, so you can see one under each stitch all the way around. So you're going to be working in these stitches, insert your hook under that third loop only, work a half double crochet into each stitch all the way around, and when you come to your first stitch, join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch. As you're working in the third loop all the way around, you will see that it is going to push the top of your stitch forward to create this little ridge of texture and that's what we're going for in this bag. So half double crochet in the third loop all the way around, join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch. At the end of round two, you'll join with the slip stitch into the first stitch. For round three of the bag sides, we're going to begin by chaining three. You're going to continue working in the same direction at this time. You're then going to work your first daisy stitch, and this is the beginning daisy stitch, so it's worked slightly differently than all the rest uh, following this one. So to work your beginning daisy stitch, you're going to begin by inserting your hook into the second chain from your hook, yarn over and drop a loop. You're then going to insert your hook into the same stitches joining, which is the same, which is the stitch at the bottom of your starting chain, yarn over and draw up a loop. You're then going to skip the next stitch and into your next, insert your hook, yarn over and draw up a loop. You'll have four loops on your hook, yarn over and draw through all four loops. That's your beginning daisy stitch. You're then going to chain one. You're going to continue working daisy stitches all the way around. This time when you work your daisy stitch, you're going to insert your hook into that chain stitch. So the chain stitch we just worked, insert your hook, yarn over and drop a loop. Next, insert your hook into the same stitch as the previous daisy stitch, so right at the base. Insert your hook, draw up a loop. Skip the next stitch, insert your hook in the next stitch, yarn over, draw up a loop. Four loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through all four loops and chain one. You're going to repeat this all the way around, working daisy stitches all the way around. When you come to your final stitch, you will not work that final stitch, that chain stitch, but instead simply join with a slip stitch into the top of your first. I'll show you that when I come around. Round 
When you come all the way around at the end of round three, you're going to work your final daisy stitch. When you're working this final daisy stitch, you're actually inserting your hook for the final piece into the same stitch as joining, yarning over, pulling through all four loops on your hook, and then do not work the chain stitch, but instead join directly into the top of the next daisy stitch. You can then chain three and turn your work. We're now going to work one more round of daisy stitches. This time we're going to begin by inserting our hook with a beginning daisy stitch into the second chain from our hook, yarn over and drop a loop. Insert your hook into the stitch at the base of your turning chain. So this is going to be the center of your daisy stitch. So just down at the base, insert your hook, yarn over, drop a loop. Skip the next stitch and into your next chain stitch, into the center, insert your hook, yarn over and draw up a loop. Four loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through all four and chain one. You're going to continue working your daisy stitches all the way around. First inserting your hook into that first chain stitch, then into the space, the chain stitch at the base of the previous stitch. Skip the next stitch, which is your daisy stitch, and into your chain stitch, yarn over, drop a loop. Four loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through all four. You're going to repeat this all the way around, just as you did before, uh, ending off in the similar way. You're going to work your final daisy stitch into the same stitch as joining. Omit that chain stitch and join directly into the first daisy stitch. So work your daisy stitches all the way around and then meet me back here. At the end of round four, you're going to work your final daisy stitch, skipping that stitch and working into the same stitch as joining, and then do not chain one. You're just going to join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch, chain one, and turn. For round five, we're now going to work half double crochet stitches in each stitch all the way around. When you're working these half double crochet stitches, you want to make sure that you're working into the chain stitch or into the center of your daisy and into the top of each daisy stitch. At the end of this round, make sure that you have once again 144 stitches and then join with a slip stitch in the top of your first stitch. We are then going to switch to our color C. At the end of your round four, your or sorry, at the end of yarn five, you're going to join with the uh, work your final stitch. So you have 144 stitches, and then join with a slip stitch into the top of your first half double crochet stitch. You can then go ahead and uh, you can fasten off your color B, or you can leave it attached. It's really up to you. I'm just going to pull it through here, but then I am going to leave it attached because I don't have uh, much left here. And you're going to join your color C with a slip stitch into that same stitch as joining. Now for round six, working with your color C, you're going to chain one and you're going to be working in the third loop all the way around, working half double crochet stitches into the third loop of each stitch. 
going to do that all the way around your bag. At the end of this round, you're going to join with a slip stitch into your first stitch and you will then once again fasten off your color C and we're going to be joining our color uh, B back onto there. So a half double crochet in the third loop of each stitch all the way around. At the end of round six, you'll have joined with a slip stitch into your first stitch. You can fasten off that color C because you're not going to need it for a little bit and you're going to join your color B once again in the same stitch as joining. You're then going to chain one for round seven with your color B. You're going to work in the third loop all the way around and you're going to simply work a half double crochet stitch into each stitch all the way around. When you come back to your first stitch, you're going to join with a slip stitch into the top of your first half double crochet stitch. At the end of round seven, you're going to join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch. We're going to continue working with our color B. Now for rounds 8, 9, 10, and 11, you're essentially going to repeat your rounds 2, 3, 4, and 5. So your round 2 began with a half double crochet into the third loop of each stitch all the way around, followed then by two rounds of daisy stitches, and then one round of half double crochet stitches. So this will bring you to the end of round 11 and at the end of round 11 you'll join with your slip stitch in your first stitch and then you're going to join back our color A. So I'm going to leave you to work those repeats. Repeat round 2, 3, 4, and 5. Switch to your color A and meet me back here. Once you have completed your repeats and you're there at the end of round 11, you'll join with your slip stitch into your first stitch and you can then fasten off. For round 12, we're going to begin by joining our color A into the same stitch as joining. and chain one. You're then going to continue working in the third loop and work a half double crochet into each stitch all the way around. When you come back to your first stitch, join with the slip stitch into the top of your first stitch and for this round you're going to continue working in your color A. At the end of round 12, join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch and chain one. For round 13, we're going to repeat our round 12. We're going to work a half double crochet working in the third loop of that same stitch as joining and then half double crochet in the third loop in each stitch all the way around. At the end of this round, join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch. For round 14, you're going to chain four, and your chain four will count as a double crochet, which is your first three chains, and then a chain one. You're then going to skip the next stitch and work a double crochet into your next. Chain one. Skip the next stitch, work a double crochet into your next stitch, and chain one. You're going to repeat that all the way around. Skip the next stitch, double crochet into your next stitch, and chain one all the way around until you come to your first stitch and you're going to chain one and then join with a slip stitch into the third chain of that starting chain four.
at the end of round 14, you'll end with a chain one, skip one, join with a slip stitch into the third chain of that starting chain four. You're then going to chain one. For round 15, half double crochet into the same stitches joining, and then half double crochet into the next chain one space. Half double crochet into the next stitch, and half double crochet into the chain one space. You're going to work half double crochets into each stitch and chain one space all the way around. When you come to your first stitch, join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch. At the end of round 15, you're going to join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch. You can then fasten off your color A and then join your color B into the first stitch and chain one. You're then working with your color B, you're going to work round 16 by working a half double crochet into that third loop of the same stitch as joining. Then continue working in the third loop all the way around and half double crochet into each stitch. When you come to your first stitch, join with a slip stitch into your first stitch. At the end of round 16, join with the slip stitch into the top of your first stitch. You've now come to the repeat in, or the longer repeat in the bag sides. So at this time, for rounds 17 through to 30, you're going to repeat rounds 2 through to 15 once more. At the end of your round, repeat of round 15, you will not switch to your color B, but you will continue to work in your color A. So from this point on, you're going to repeat rounds 2 through to 15. That will bring you to the end of round 30 for the bag sides, and then you can meet me back here, and we will work the top of the bag and the handles together. At the end of round 30, you will have completed all of your repeats for the design and you'll have your bag worked up to the second blue stripe of double crochet skip one and uh, then a final round of half double crochet in each stitch and chain space. So that brings you to round 15, your final repeat. At that time, do not fasten off your color A. You're going to continue working in color A, and we're now ready to work the top and the handles of our bag. To begin, for round one of the top and handles with your color A, you're simply going to work a half double crochet in the third loop of each stitch all the way around beginning with the same stitches joining. So half double crochet into that third loop of each stitch all the way around. At the end of round one for your bag top and handles, you're going to join with a slip stitch into that first stitch. At the end of round one of your top, you're joining with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch and chain one. Continue working in the same direction, and now for the next three rounds, rounds two, three, and four, you're going to work rounds of single crochet. You've chained one, single crochet into the same stitches joining, and then single crochet into each stitch all the way around. When you come to your first stitch, you're going to join with a slip stitch into the top of that first stitch, chain one, and repeat. So work three rounds of single crochet stitches, and then meet me back here.
at the end of round four of your bag top, you'll have worked your three rounds of single crochet stitches. You're now all set to begin working the handles. So we're going to chain one, continue working in the same direction. For round five, you're going to single crochet into the same stitch as joining, and then into each of the next 37 stitches. So single crochet in each of the next 37 stitches. So you'll have a total of 38 altogether. Fifteen, twenty five altogether. Once you've worked a total of 38 single crochet stitches, you're then going to chain 50. Now if this is, forms the handle. If you want to make the handles longer, you can just chain more stitches or shorter, chain less stitches. Just remember how many chains you make because you'll want to make the same number on the other side. I also recommend making them fairly loose because you will be working into them uh, later on. There's 25. 40. And 50. Once you have your 50 chains work, you're going to be careful not to twist the chain. And on your bag, you're going to skip the next 34 stitches. You're then going to single crochet into each of the next 38 stitches. So simply single crochet in that next stitch in each of the next 37 again, so a total of 38 stitches. That's 20.
and 38. Once you've worked in the next 38 stitches, and then once again going to chain 50 or the number of stitches that you chained for the other handle. There's 10. Twenty, thirty, forty, and fifty. You're then going to skip the remaining thirty four stitches all the way across and then join with a slip stitch into the top of your first single crochet. Once again make sure that chain is not twisted. You want to work right into that single crochet. You can then chain one and that brings you to the end of round five. Now for rounds six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. You're simply going to chain one single crochet into that first stitch and then into each stitch all the way around. When you come to your long chain you can either work into that chain if you would like or you can simply work into the chain space and work around the chain. I'll show you what I mean when I come across but you're going to be working into each stitch all the way around and then when you come to that handle if you're working in the chain space you'll want 50 single crochets into the chain space or else one single crochet into each chain all the way across. I'm almost all the way there. So when you come to that long chain, again, work into each stitch all the way across. It can be a little bit tedious, especially for this first round, so if you're getting super frustrated, just work them into the chain space. It's really up to you. When you come back to your first stitch, you're going to join with a slip stitch into that first stitch, chain one, and repeat. From here on end, you just simply want five more rounds of single crochet stitches. And uh, by the end of this round, you'll have a total of 244 stitches. And uh, yeah, just work five of them. At the end of your row, round 10, you can fasten off, weave in all of your ends, and that is all there is to working this daisy market bag. So thank you so much for joining me. Once again, while you're here, don't forget to subscribe, take a look around, and I look forward to seeing you again, hopefully next week for the second market bag in the Marvelous Market Bag Crochet Along. Until then, happy crocheting. Bye.